Last but not least, I uh, have the pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Hania, and she's an example of the private sector, if I can call you that, but not the private sector, but the public private partnership. Dr. Hania, when we wanted to do the interview, we, I got many questions from many people from the social media said, uh, why a woman like her decide to suddenly take herself back to Sudan and invest her money in Sudan? She's here, she's well established, she's a consultant, she's an OBE. Uh, why did she want to go to Sudan and put her money there? So uh, you have been, I think the Queen already awarded you the OBE, so we don't need to talk too much about the great work you have done. Because you got the stamp from the Queen of your work. So I don't think whatever we say, you know, but the work you have done has been remarkable. And I think also this is not for Sudan, it's the whole African continent. So I'll give you the floor. And many people, by the way, sent questions and they were admiring and they said the great work you have done is highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, honored guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Alam, for inviting me. Uh, I'll tell you about that building. I think before, uh, why uh, breast? Because uh, I worked here in UK as a consultant breast radiologist for over 20 years since the inception of the breast cancer screening program. And I was fortunate to get the whole experience and enjoy all the uh, progress and development in that. And uh, meanwhile, uh, I visited Sudan and like everybody, uh, I lost a lot of friends and family uh, from the disease. And uh, I think that what uh, inspired me uh, and uh, I was lucky. I had the financial resources as well. So I uh, went to Sudan uh, in 2005 and started uh, the center from um, scratch, from nothing at all. Uh, it was supposed to take two years, it took five years to build, but uh, October 2010 we opened a Khartoum Breast Care Center, which is uh, a non-profit, privately funded uh, organization and it is the only specialized uh, multidisciplinary uh, center in Sudan and we receive as well patients from the neighboring countries, uh, Chad, uh, Eritrea, South Sudan and uh, Ethiopia, sir. yeah. Uh, the center uh, is under one roof and we have uh, advanced equipment and uh, the only, as we said, digital mammography machine. Uh, the staff uh, is highly trained because we were really fortunate uh, when we opened in 2010. Uh, the privilege we had is my colleagues working here at General Cross and Hospitals in UK uh, they volunteered and traveled to Sudan and trained them and after two years we were really full Sudanese staff and still we have full st uh, Sudanese staff. Uh, the service it's all under one roof. The lady from SART she has her diagnosis and uh, as we said we are multidisciplinary uh, clinical uh, imaging and biopsy. Then we have the multidisciplinary meetings where we uh, decide what the treatment of the lady is going to be. Then she'll have her surgery and chemotherapy. So it's all under one roof. And uh, I think uh, the service is offered at a reasonable price. And those who can't afford it, we have a charitable fund, established a charitable fund to support those who can't afford it. About 20% of all our patients are uh, funded, uh, supported by the fund. Okay. Uh, as we know in Sudan, 30% uh, of all cancer in women is breast. And seven, over 70% present late in the disease, unfortunately. And as we all know, early detection saves life. And uh, that is our slogan for the awareness campaign. Uh, in Sudan, 
the present plate and the other thing is they most of the leaders, especially in rural areas, they think that uh, breast cancer is uh, taboo and a death sentence. So we tell them, no, it is a treatable disease. And we get some of our uh, volunteer uh, ladies who survived the disease. They come and talk to them and tell them about their journey through the disease. And really that's very good because it really reassures those who are receiving treatment. At the same time, it's very good because we let them ex teach the ladies uh, breast self-examination. And as you all know, we are a developing country. We can't afford uh, screening program, uh, no financially or human resources, it's not on. And the recommendation of the WHO is just you downgrade the disease. And that's what when you teach them breast self-examination, they do come at an earlier stage. And it makes a difference, as you all know. Uh, we try to, uh, how do uh, we spread the uh, awareness campaign? Uh, we have in the center seminar room and we uh, give lectures for big groups, uh, up to 30 or 40. Uh, GPs, uh, nurses, uh, medical students, and some uh, university volunteers, uh, and midwives. And uh, midwives, they, pray, uh, they play a big role, especially in rural areas. So, and that's really good. So if they can teach and talk to ladies about uh, their breasts and how to examine their breasts. Also, we reach uh, ladies, working ladies in their workplace. We go to give them talk in factories, uh, banks, and so on. Uh, uh, house ladies, we go to communities and talk to them about the awareness. And uh, uh, as well, in the big groups in the hospital, we have as well uh, workshops where they do practical. We have uh, dummy model where they we teach them how to feel so when they go and teach outside out in the states they'll be able to teach them and uh, have the feel of how it is and give them a lot of uh, leaflets so they can spread it uh, of course now nowadays social media we have our website where they can click and they see the video she can teach herself how to examine uh, herself. Uh, of course, during October, the uh, Awareness Month, there'll be a big campaign, uh, television, radio, billboards, uh, newspapers, uh, events, with a lot of events. And uh, we have sponsors from big companies where they uh, give free mammography for ladies. So. Uh, October is really very active, but we insist that uh, during the whole month, the, uh, the whole year, there should be uh, awareness campaign. We can show some of the facilities. She was showing. Yeah, that's our reception. And we don't, people don't walk in. They have to call and have an appointment because it's not an emergency. Uh, so they have the appointment. Then uh, that's, uh, can we go back? Uh, that's they check here first. Then, sorry, yeah, they check that uh, their appointment. <coughs> then they are taken to another room where they have all. Uh, we are. We wanted to be paperless, and we are almost we all all computerized. And they put the information. Then they are taking to have their uh, to changing room. Then she goes. First to the clinician, I think next, and after that, uh, she clinician, clinician will decide if she's having, uh, if she's young, as you know, ultrasound, if uh, all that she'll have mammogram, and we have that's our digital mammography machine, and she'll go back. Uh, of course, the image will be transferred to the workstation with a decide here or take her to the ultrasound and we do uh, straight away core biopsy. We don't do FNA. 
and then she'll go back. We have a general uh, x-ray room for chest and pre-op, okay? And that's surgery. We started uh, we surgery doing just one week. Every four weeks now we do uh, every week and it's three times a week we do surgery. And now we started, of course, with uh, mastectomy and uh, I believe some uh, people here. Uh, now we do even reconstruction and that's our chemotherapy session because as you know she can have if most of the big tumors uh, advanced disease they have chemo before and then surgery and chemo afterwards and uh, that's our we can talk about that in a minute yeah so uh, that's KBCC and in a nutshell, uh, now we'll talk about Khartoum Breast Care Center and sustainability and we'll start with the environmental uh, sustainability and that is our waste disposal unit and it's eco-friendly and all what uh, all we know the medical waste is really uh, dangerous so you can just put all the needles and syringes, all uh, blood, all the waste on top, and it's like uh, an autoclave. The end result comes sterilized into something very small, like a confetti, and it can be disposable normally, like anything. So that's our bit of the environmental sustainability. Then we'll go to the social. Of course, by nature, breast and work, our 70% of our staff are females. We have very few uh, some surgery, surgeons, uh, though we have female surgeon, female radiologist, female uh, histo, and of course all our uh, nurses and uh, technicians, radiographers are females, and reception, it's all females. So we have just few men so and uh, our policy is to really enable females so any uh, co-patient or any volunteer or even uh, survivors we let them if they are interested uh, train in uh, breast self-examination and they go and help uh, and spread the awareness uh, as well as i mean if they can, uh, want to come and just help as aid in the clinic, uh, they do, and um, we look after our staff. Uh, we work as a team, and everybody knows that. And uh, capacity, uh, we give all the level, and no job is a small job. We all work together. Capacity building, uh, as much as we can, uh, all our staff, we give them uh, uh, social and health insurance because you know, health is the f no free health now in Sudan, they have health insurance private. And uh, we assess salaries every three months because everybody know how uh, we are non profit and we reached. We broke even after four years, and during the first four years, we still supported the center because uh, we could it. I mean, we are treated as if we are uh, any business, so we don't have any support, even electricity. We pay the tariff, the high one, and uh, we pay um, tax. We pay the care. I know the Sudanese do the care. So, but still, uh, I think it was very good that we did break even after four years. And the same year, we decided to establish the charitable fund, which is completely separate. And uh, all the business, all the uh, friends, business people, they support some of them. Put, uh, uh, they give us a sending order or whatever and 
we support surgery because that's a little bit more expensive and uh, now as well chemotherapy because these are really the expensive and they need a lot of uh, support and as we said we support about 20 percent of all our patients uh, we do our best and uh, i hope we can manage or raise some more money to help more okay okay uh, as i said economic which is uh, we became self-sustained in four years and uh, now uh, we have one machine mammography machine and we get it's old eight years and recently as well it was broken and unfortunately because of the sanction no spare parts uh, it was out of order for 10 weeks and imagine we all work as mammography it's all breast and 10 weeks without it was very frustrating for the staff and the patients were disappointed uh, but what can we do i mean because you have yes we managed before to lift the sanction from the ge medical equip equipment because it's ge fine it was lifted and instead of having a long process of having a license blah blah that's not but we don't have a local agent we don't have any support in the country so still spare part will come from france everything comes from cairo because service and uh, engineers come to service from cairo so it is still really uh, a long process and it's a burden uh, now uh, we are in the process of uh, trying to raise funds to have a second machine because it's really needed and now we have four, 40 patients we do four days uh, we have friday and saturday off we work five days four days assessment clinical and uh, symptomatic and during that every day we see 40 patients out of those around 30 are new cases so all these numbers i mean now it's the workload has increased so many times and one machine of we really badly need a machine and we're starting a campaign just to raise money to have a second or another uh, mammography machine which is badly needed so i hope that we have a successful campaign uh, i won't take any much longer and in spite of all these harsh conditions and many obstacles obstacles under the u.s sanctions and it's not only the spare part sanction as a well um, reagents for er and pr because the company is belgium and american still we can't and first time i ordered they said oh i was it just happened i was in uh, dubai he said no no we can send it to dubai but no sudan no so you let somebody else get it there and everything is just really uh, very hard and indirect but anyway we survived under <laughs> all these <laughs> obstacles and uh, i hope with my team they are really and that's really what makes you just say no uh, the team and the people in sudan young people are really fantastic dedicated they believe in what are they doing perseverance and uh, it was great and as we said uh, thank god we were uh, rewarded with the honorable recognition uh, from uk and from sudan and uh, i think we made a difference definitely in the uh, breast cancer or breast care as a whole and uh, we're sudanese we love sudan and we work in sudan thank you Thank you very much.